Okay, the last concept over here in vector 3 we'll be learning is actually finding the distance between two parallel planes. Okay, take note, the reason why I actually place it inside these notes is because over the last few years, uh, we do see the trend of this question being appear a lot of times. Okay, be it from prelim papers, school exams, to even A-levels as well. Okay, so we have to sort of learn this uh, because a lot of things we can actually derive from this and a lot of application kind of questions are actually appearing relationship to these two concepts or rather to this concept okay so to find this between two parallel plane there are actually a few ways to actually learn how to find it okay so i'm going to go through with you the uh, fair bit of different kinds of uh, methods to actually find the distance between two parallel plane and over here uh, you should be able to find a uh, find something that suits you the most okay now let's quickly just draw up let's say this is my plane two and let's say this is my plane one Okay, plane 2 equation is r dot 1 minus 1, 3 equal to 5. And plane 1 equation. Plane 1 equation over here will be r dot 1 minus 1, 3 equal to 11. Okay, take note, to find the distance between planes, we have to make sure that the planes are parallel. If not, that doesn't make sense for me to find that uh, distance. If only they are parallel, then there will be a constant distance between these two parallel planes. Okay, so the first concept, obviously, is something that we have already learned. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let a point A be here. Okay, let's say point A here to be 5, 0, 0. Okay, essentially to find the distance between two parallel planes, it's like finding the shortest distance from a point to a plane. Okay, we have already learned that in the previous video. So if you don't remember how to do it, do go and check back on the video that uh, focuses on finding the distance from a point to a plane. Okay, so we just need to let a point on plane 2 or plane 1 also can. Okay, then we just find the shortest distance from a point to a plane. Okay, essentially this will help me to derive the distance between two parallel planes. That's method one. Okay, now method two. Okay, I'm not going to just do all the working. You can then try it out yourself. You should be able to derive. Okay, method two essentially is using the distance from uh, plane to origin. Okay, from origin to plane two, let's say. Okay, you should derive as uh, 5 over... Let's see, it will be modulus n, modulus n will be 1 square, 1 square plus 3 square will be root 11. Okay, distance from origin to plane 2, plane, uh, plane 1 over here. Sorry, I realized that there's a mix up over here, my bad. Huh? Okay, this is plane 1, this is plane 2. Okay, so distance from plane uh, origin to plane, this is plane 1, my bad. Okay, I hope you are still following me. Okay, distance from origin to plane 2, okay, to plane 1, to plane 2, will then be 11 over root 11. Okay, so assuming my origin is here. Okay, so distance from plane 1 to origin will be 5 over root 11. Okay, distance from plane 2 to origin will then be 11 over root 11. So to find the distance between plane 1 and plane 2, essentially is... Distance between plane 1 and plane 2 will then be the furthest away one, which is root 11 over root 11, minus away 5 over root 11, to give me 6 over root 11. Okay, now take note, okay, um, then what I'm going to learn is essentially to find the distance between two parallel planes is actually this formula over here. Okay, distance between two parallel planes okay say plane one is r dot n equal to d1 plane two is r dot n equal to d2 okay take note uh, d1 d2 is just the constant you, have, you need to make sure that the normal is the same first okay if the normal is not the same you have to change the normal to the same okay if not you won't be able to use this formula okay it's essentially the formula is modulus of d1 minus d2 over modulus of n. Okay, take note, this is the formula that we are looking at. Okay, so some students will start to ask me, what happened, right? Joy, what happened if, let's say, now we are assuming that origin um, lies on top of plane 1 and plane 2. What happens if we say origin is at the center of plane 1 and plane 2? Then what do we do? Do we plus them? Or how do I know which plane is actually further away? Okay, further away is still quite logic. You still can use the distance uh, between plane origin to plane. Okay, how about if the origin is the center? Do I really have the case where origin is the center? Yes, okay. However, take note, because if the origin is at the center between the two planes, 
Okay, one of the constant will be a negative value. Okay, that's why we actually mod the formula over here. Okay, you realize that the model is over here. So even if let's say the origin is at center, one of the constant will be negative. So it'll be minus minus to derive as positive. So there's no need for you to go and worry where does the origin lies in. Okay, just have to employ this formula straight. Okay, this formula is very useful uh, in a way that uh, there's a lot of application kind of questions that we are looking at that actually require you to use this formula. Okay, however, this formula is really limited in a way that I can only use this for distance between two parallel plates. No other concepts I can use this formula. Okay, so it's a very limited kind of concept. Um, so it's not easy for you to keep this in check. Okay, but it's always good for you to remember in a way. Okay, if you really are a student that, or really are a student that someone that uh, I always die die also cannot remember the formula. Okay, then I might suggest you to revert back to the first step, the first method that we use. Okay, let a point that lies on plane one or let a point lies on plane two. Then I find the shortest distance between the point to the next plane. Okay, that will perhaps uh, help you to still find the distance between two plane. Okay, so that's all for vector three. I hope you should be able to derive this uh, quickly. Okay, so like I say, every time you finish your vectors, um, if you are relearning this topic again, please do go ahead and do up your tutorial. If you are just learning certain uh, specific concept, hope you should be able to use this concept to solve any questions that you are trying to solve. Okay, if not, that's all for vector three. Take note, um, from vector one to three, there's a lot of formulas, there's a lot of concept being used, but I did teach you all the vector triangle and stuff. Uh, hopefully this will help you to trigger some memory and help you to remember a lot of things, uh, things a lot better. Okay, so generally, I will always suggest my students, please go ahead and do your summary notes if you can, uh, because vector is a very huge topic. A lot of formulas out there, um, pre relationship between two lines, two planes, so and so forth. Um, these are the things that students generally very hard for you to remember. So a summary notes will always help you, assist you in helping you to remember. At the same time, when you do questions, um, certain concepts that you are totally uh, don't remember, you can always flip back to your summary notes and take a look. Instead of flipping through uh, pages and pages of lecture notes or pages and pages of notes that are actually given to you. So summary notes always work uh, better in a way. But of course, it's up to your individual le learning to see uh, what kind of learning situation suit you. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Okay, if not, that's all for vectors. I hope you do understand all the concepts as well. If you don't remember, if you're a student of mine, feel free to reach out to me. Um, there's a lot of things that we can discuss as well.